And we're live. So welcome everybody. Welcome to this uh, weekly webinar. This is Francesco Cipollone, your host. And today we have the absolute pleasure to have Bob Roger and together with me from the chapter, uh, Vladimir. Oops. I shouldn't have the stream <laughs> broadcasting in my ears with the delay. Bob, do you want to give a little bit of introduction before uh, EcraCon with the introduction of the chapter, and then I'll leave you guys the stage? Sure. Um, so I, I'm I'm Bob Roger. I've uh, worked in banking security for for too long to remember, um, about twenty odd twenty five years, um, and always been involved in delivering security solutions, um, building a proposition for the customer. And, and I guess that's really where I come from in, in, in terms of all security. Security shouldn't hit you in the face. It should be not seen and be um, and, and, and work well, right? Um, and I guess my background is I've always worked for banks and uh, banks with countries in the name, as I was saying to Francesco earlier on. Um, the current, uh, uh, the, uh, the current uh, organization doesn't have a country um, in its name. It's a bank of Butterfield, but we are based out of Bermuda. And that organization is based in everywhere there's been a Bond movie and shit. <laughs> That's um, a great advertisement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah the official yeah. bank of Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you, know, we, you know, if you're looking for jobs, you got to go for, for places that have got great locations, right? <laughs> well, at least, at least uh, you, you're close to the beach, wherever you want to be. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I guess, Francesco, I'm not going to talk about um, purist cloud security. I'm going to talk about how you deliver um, security services um, for your organization using cloud services, right? So it's it's cloud security for cl for security sake, yeah. And, and and that's and that's great. And and I want more of this kind of conversation because I think uh, if we focus just <clears throat> primarily on security then the challenge is uh, with security for security for world security. And, and my mantra is security needs to be frictionless, needs to be part of the enterprise. And as you've rightfully said, we're going to talk about cloud, cloud usage. By the way, there is the security element of it, but it's not going to be only security by security. Yeah. So yeah. thank you for that, because we're going to definitely need to do more than this. But let me introduce quickly the chapter for the folks that are online, and then I'm going to leave you guys the stage. All right, so a little bit about who we are. So we are the UK chapter. We're part of the uh, Cloud Security Alliance. It's a global organization. It's a global non-for-profit organization for who doesn't know us. We are effectively the one that developed the ISO 27017 or 18 on the back of the cloud control matrix. is effectively our standard framework for <clears throat> Cloud control. So this has been an industry collaboration uh, amongst um, various industry leaders. Uh, who we are as, as a chapter is effectively just a community of people uh, that uh, brings talks similar to this, does research, does outreach, does academic outreach, does events to effectively evangelize about the cloud security or evangelize about the use of the cloud in a secure way, as, as, Bob, uh, as Bob was rightfully saying. Uh, you can participate to us, so we, uh, we are uh, recruiting for more uh, people in this space, but I will uh, give some more detail at the end of the presentation. What we are effectively looking for is for people that help us with research and events, of course, networking and mentoring. You can follow us at, at CSA UK chapter or on LinkedIn group. Also, we have a LinkedIn page. Uh, if you search for Cloud Security Alliance UK chapter on LinkedIn, you're going to find us. And of course, on this YouTube channel that you are hopefully tuned in, <laughs> and you're going to see all the other event, webinar, and other recording. But without further ado, I'll leave the stage to Bob. Cool. And Vladimir. So Vladimir okay. is part of the Cloud Security Alliance is our director of events. Uh, so guys, have a nice conversation. Yeah, perfect. Uh, thanks, Francesco. So to, to, you know, today, uh, I have the pleasure of discussing with Bob uh, on specific topic, um, not how to kind of go into the cloud as an enterprise, but how to use the, the cloud enabled security services for the security teams sake and how to make their work uh, you know, better. 
you know, I, I still remember when I started in security 2000, 2000 actually, uh, that you know there was not really a cloud uh, at that time. And when the security team wanted to do any any improvements, any investment, it was always a hardware, st- rack it, stack it somewhere, install it, look, think about the maintenance, think about the upgrades, uh, you know, install, sec- you know, secure application. These days, you know, apparently, you know, at least to my mind, it, it's, it seems it's much easier. Um, um, Bob, what, what is your kind of experience and uh, how do you think that the cloud enabled the security team in your long career to, to do the security services oh, and security work better? Don't say long career. It makes me sound really old, which, which I am, but, you know, by the by. But, so I guess um, so, so, uh, so something you said there, Vlad, right, is you mentioned um, back in the old days we were still putting tin into data centers and all the rest of it. I still, and this is a little bit of a gripe and a complaint, is I think that a lot of organizations are still doing that, but in other people's data centers and calling it cloud, right? They're okay. still treating their servers like loved and cared for pets rather than a herd and just doing what's right and using today's tools rather than yesterday's manners. But so that was a, that's a gripe, and then I'll go and answer your question. So, so I guess um, for for me, it's really about enabling the business, right? So, um, I, I work in a a medium size organization, um, I, I, as many of the people on this call probably do, um, which means that you've got it's probably a smaller internal IT team, a smaller internal um, security function, and being able to deliver the huge business demand because the business demand is always going to be huge. You need to be able to scale it, deliver it at pace and make sure that it's robust and fit for purpose. And back to what Francesca was saying is security has to be frictionless. So um, using cloud services to enable orchestration between multiple third parties who you're dealing with is is one of the fundamentals. So cloud is a way of collaboration, both technically and both with people. That that is really one of the, the, the foundation blocks for me and, and you know that's kind of like how we work together um so, so hopefully that gives you an idea of, of why you go and do it but then it's really about how do you get the value out of it and what are you trying to deliver so for me security start it's, it's all about data and the big best and most valuable data i have is intelligence so if you build intelligence at the core of how you're trying to deliver security that may allows you to have faster better and more accurate decisions ideally before something bad happens yeah Mm -hmm. so in effect uh, could could you say or could i kind of paraphrase that the cloud with its characteristics of kind of on demand uh, pretty much unlimited capacity to to some extent allows you to scale up or scale down the uh, ingestion of the data and analytics very much so. So, and, and I'm glad you brought up, up analytics because data is at the core of of all security and the ability to automate it and to get anomalies out of it um, and and make better decisions. So, because of that flexibility and because of the ability to burst, um, we can go and write some very um, process intensive. Uh, memory intensive use cases to go and detect something very specific, which is important now. It may not be important ne- uh, next week, but we can do it now, mm-hmm. spin it up, and find stuff and then get rid of it. Now, in a traditional on prem or even hybrid environment, that's tougher to do, you know. So, so that allows us the flexibility to react ahead of the curve and you know if it doesn't work feel fast forward we'll go and do something better and there's very little cost to it yeah 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 very, very good point um i think one one challenge that you know we see as a cloud security alliance and we we've got some series on uh you know getting people jobs in cloud security um and in cyber security in general as well is perhaps lack of uh, lack of perfect knowledge, if there is such term of perfect knowledge, but effectively knowledge how to use the cloud <coughs> securely and cloud security services, obviously, and most effectively. Uh, how, how have you, um, let's say, prepared your team uh, to, to be kind of skilled and knowledgeable about the secure services that can go into the cloud and, you know, sure. value? 
Yeah, it's, so that, that is, it's a good question. It's not really one I, I, I consider, but it's a case of, um, so, so the, the way that I, I built a number of security operations capabilities previously, and, and you can do this, do them in, a, in, in a, a fashion which is kind of traditional SOC as a service. You know, you have a L1 and L2 and an L3, and you have increasing um a de decreasing number of, of events going up those chains and lots of manpower doing things, um, which means that on L1 you have less experienced staff and L2 you have more and well, more and more and more. Um, yeah. It's not kind of the way I either build SOCs or the way they build security organizations. But, uh, and it does talk to a little bit of how and why we're, I'm using cloud and API rich um, environments. It's really to, I hire people who are the best of the best or try to, um, or people who have the ambition to be the best of the best. Um, they may not have, I don't think there's anything as perfect knowledge because let's face it, we're all learning every day, particularly in this space. Um, there's, there's not a day that I, I, I throw away a piece of knowledge from the, what I learned yesterday, right? Um, because it, it really is a, a radically changing field and also my my understandings are constantly being challenged by the by what what's been found out in market and um, to 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 do that we um have a constant learning environment and it's really about you know everything within the teams we build is around people process technology governance and metrics right so that that's across everything we deliver the people component is the most important and giving them the uh, the knowledge that they can try things and if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Try it again. So feel fast forward mindfully, right? So make, make sure you learn from the experience. The um, uh, the second part is making sure that people have the tools and the toys and the education to go and do it. So providing the uh, uh, free and easy access using cloud services um, to training and awareness and, and, and knowledge bases that they can leverage on a day-to-day -day, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and also building network, you know, this is this is a this forum is a is a really good example of a network where you can call upon friends to find out how to do things. So I'd mm -hmm. urge people to go and use that network. Um, people, um, not not just technology, are there are, are our best asset, right? Um, yeah. And be, being people centric is is essentially how you get things done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, kind of thinking about it, what you said about the assets. You know, people are assets. So if we jump into overall kind of asset management in more let's say traditional business it centric way uh, it, you're, trying to say you're, you're a ci right <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Technically, yes yeah um but you know in, in traditional organizations where you know where the cloud is not really centric to their business strategy uh, the asset management as far as i can see you know in my clients and in previous organizations we've I worked uh, with and for uh, asset management has been really a big struggle uh, of some afterthought you know some other team is doing asset management um, there's no there are no KPIs you know there's no centralized uh, CMDB uh, obviously from the cloud native kind of point of view because uh, everything is well documented in cloud at least in the good clouds through the APIs that's becoming definitely better um, you know how how do you think that it Kind of helps you in delivering the cybersecurity services uh, with yeah. the, you know, with the better CMDB and worse, obviously CMDB on, you know, because most likely working with a hybrid model in, in your environment. Well, 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 well that's it. There, there, I don't think there's, well, maybe there is, but there's not many places with a with a pure cloud environment. You still have things which are on prem, whether it be you know local compute devices like a laptop or a or, or, or a or a multifunction printer or whatever it may be, um, you're still going to have a hybrid um, technology environment. Um, so the the CMDB problem, um, I was lucky. I got the ability to go and build, um, not from scratch, but to go and rebuild and create a single single CMDB um, using a cloud service. Um, and the, for cloud, it's as you as you see, it's actually quite easy. Um, the, it's very, you know, you can use the APIs and you can manage them well, but the problem still exists on the old on-prem um, component, and it's um, you you need to kind of create an inverse pyramid, make sure that you're 
like have an, uh, get all the stuff that sh which uh, you're really uh, interested in in there and keep and keep going through that and understanding and mm -hmm. getting in so you can have that pure place service view because services um, business services they're not just a cloud component they are you know the desktop the networking uh, there might be an on-prem component as well to understand that end-to-end -end service view so but uh, I mean just the the, the problem hasn't changed it's got a little bit easier in one place but the old problem still remains vladimir um and, and, I, don't, and I don't think it's going to get easier anytime soon unfortunately um and I, I don't think there's any way around it i mean what do you think do you think there's a way away from it or do you think it's just that's that's life right we're, 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 we're going to be hybrid for a long time yeah it's definitely going to be incremental improvements uh but it, ne it needs to come um it needs to come from top, uh, and when I say top, most likely in the you know in the context of CMDB, it needs to be a CIO, uh, you know, having a good, let's say, metrics for how to measure the effectiveness of the asset management. And the best effectiveness, you know, in my experience, is if you have a service provider, you don't pay for anything that is not in CMDB and it's not it's not managed, and if uh, and then. Uh, the, the CIO should incentivize, uh, you know, his or her team, uh, effectively executive team in under CIO, uh, with, you know, bonuses and uh, effectively performance reviews, and the asset management overall quality should be part of part of that. You know, um, it, 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 for for me, it's it's really about making sure you use the data, and the data is used in everyday processes, right? So back to security, right? Security isn't something which ex exists outside. Uh, it's the same with this. Asset management is intrinsic to delivering good quality IT. So uh -huh. range yeah. management, uh, incident management, service management, business um, um, business capability management are all underpinned by good CMDB data, right? So. Um, I, 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 and really, as long as you embed the processes to keep CMDB updated and a living beast within your organization, you're in a good place. Now, within my organization, that was a joint project. That was um, a, a CISO CIO led initiative to go and do that. And now mm -hmm. we're, we've got a whole bunch of projects to go and make sure that we're embedding the use of that data um, on an ongoing basis. Because, and, and to be honest, Vladimir, it's an it's not a story that stops it's something which you keep having to enhance and start using your data and um, whether it's cmd yeah. or if it's threat intelligence right yeah definitely you know good yeah. good security processes do require um you know good cmdb you know with the accurate data you know complete attributes as much as possible uh, similar to itil you know in itil you have the cmdb as a kind of core of all the processes yeah. Uh, you know, if if I look at all the kind of compliance frameworks from the cybersecurity point of view, you know, NIST, CIS, ISO, you know, the asset management is is, is quite key. Um, maybe jump into it, maybe like a tricky question a little bit. Um, um, you know, if you if you kind of had had an option uh, to go back three five years, you know, uh, what would you tell your you know younger yourself, uh, you know, in that uh, you know to do better or not to do. Yeah. In this context of this discussion, obviously. Oh, okay, fair enough. This will get us good. <laughs> not, not to invest in Bitcoin, for example. Yeah, there, was, yeah, 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 there is that one. Um, <laughs> so, so that's a good question. Uh, so uh, I, I guess it, it's it's about the and and, and I guess I, I knew this before I started. It, it's spend more time in planning. Um, that if you can spend time, spend it in planning. Now, I think I should have spent more time in architecture because um, I, 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 there was a need to develop and deploy at pace. And to do that, I deliberately created silos to go and execute on. Um, if I was to go back, I would say, OK, let's go and make sure that we define an overall um, architecture and data architecture before we started. Now, data architecture did kind of happen, but I would have spent more time on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and because I think now that we're, we're looking to perhaps enhance or modify or buy additional or new services, it would be easier to to say, okay, that component that is going, but, and that means that I'm only replacing this functionality. Um, so that's something I would 
I would have spent more time on, and maybe it's it's worthwhile in pointing out why I would do that, is that one of the, the other benefits of, of security services, which are cloud, and let's face it, most of them are subscription-based services, um, which gives you an interesting economic model in terms of how you, well, you know, the, the, they're, they're spent today for spend. You don't, you, you don't amortize them, et cetera. Um, so, but also means that, and, and I've got this thesis, and you feel free to disagree with me, uh, which, which we often do, is that um, security services have a half-life, right? So so this week, um, security product X for doing endpoint detection response is awesome, and they have an investment curve, and they tail off. Now, if I have a componentized model that is um, loosely uh, integrated but tightly coupled using good APIs, then it's easy enough for me to go, right, well, I'm no longer using product X, I'm going to use product Y. And that that economic model helps me because I'm no longer bound into something which I bought tin for, I bought perpetual licenses for, um, I can move swiftly to something which is more effective and potentially does a better job for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I, I agree with you <laughs> um, because you know I see it as well with the uh, with the companies. I mean, you know, we we partner with, uh, with several security vendors, and uh, I clearly see from the customers the need to to kind of be be fair with us and ask with them about their spend. You know, on, and for example, one of our customers uh, previously, you know, they told us. Yes, we quite happy to do subscription model, but we don't want to pay per uh, per asset because the number of assets is a is a fluctuating up and down, especially with the with the cloud environment where you have development teams and just uh, you know it could vary quite a lot. Uh, so they in this case they prefer uh, effectively charging per employee, you know, or per user, knowledge user, and so on and so forth because yeah. that's predictable. Uh, uh, it's easier for the finance team to to say, yes, we if we hire a new new person at this level, it's gonna this is gonna how much it's gonna cost the company, and the security spend is simply slotted in there. Um, and I, I I definitely see the your point about the kind of coupling, kind of decoupling uh, the security services, uh, so they are replaceable. Um, in in a couple of instances, you know, we've replaced the security vendors a few times, you know, with uh, um, with a different security solution, and it's only the benefit of the because these were cloud services with yeah. well-defined APIs that the, the customer actually uh, agreed with that, because otherwise it would be a huge exercise to rip it out and uh, and replace it with yeah. something new, even though the new is actually better from the functionality point of view. So, so Actually, there's a question for you. As a, as a supplier of services, do you still think there's a reticence because of perceived, actually, security that I don't want to go and use um, cloud-based security services because I'm a little bit scared of it? Do you still see that? I actually see that. Yeah, I even see it from security teams, not in your organization, but in other organizations uh, where uh, it, they are kind of fearing because maybe lack of knowledge of the cloud or uh, putting all the cloud providers into one basket without differentiating the the maturity. Uh, I sincerely think that you know if you if an organization you know want to go to cloud, select between three cloud providers. You know the top ones. You know Google, Azure, Amazon. Um, the next decision should be based on the CIO strategy. You know where they want to invest money. You know what's the what's the size of the account with one of those companies, and uh, that should drive the decision. And actually, that is most likely from the security point of view is going to improve the security overall, rather than uh, you know using their internal systems and uh, trying to to patch it all up. Um, so, uh, but somehow, and I think this is where Cloud Security Alliance you know has to do you know quite a lot of uh, good job and better job uh, is is to really kind of promote secure use of cloud services how to secure how to select a good cloud provider uh, and obviously how to move in all between them uh, because cloud migrations is, is also quite uh, quite a big topic um, you know first when I had a 
a customer back in, well, probably 10 years ago. Uh, they only thought about moving into the cloud. They didn't even think about uh, in the project uh, what would happen if that cloud provider you know, maybe stop providing services. That was not part of the discussion. Uh, so I, I try to push it in uh, and at least have an open discussion. What would we do? You don't want to lock your data into a cloud provider and then not being able to take it out. But that's more on the kind of data architecture and IT architecture uh, level. Uh, but probably similar with the security services. You know, if you if you were to uh, go to a security provider, you know, maybe you are locked in. I don't. I don't think there's any difference, to be quite honest. Right. So, so the, there's mm. there's only kind of one reason why you wouldn't go to cloud, and that's because you can't get back out of it, or there's something so secret that you don't want to be there. And that, the only thing I've ever come across which kind of even hinted at that was trading patterns. You know, so algorithmic trading patterns actually have value uh, because they make banks money. Yeah. Do, do you want that sitting somewhere? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, but but that that's that's a a, a potential argument. Um, I I think that we can protect that. To be quite honest, yeah. but but the, yeah. the, those are the kind of things you want to worry about. Is can you get the data back out? Because that's your secret sauce, right? That's that's really it. Um, and can you afford to get the data out? Um, is is a, is, a, is an, another interesting uh, interesting point. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Maybe before we uh, maybe before we close. Um, one tricky question that uh, might be out of the blue. Um, you know, you are obviously presenting to you know to, to the executive board and to the uh, you know board of directors and you know with challenges, you know, strategy and all that. Uh, how do you think they see the move to cloud computing? Is is it actually really an interesting for them, or is it just they sweep it under the carpet? This is the CIO and CISO's problem, and uh, you know, just deliver the strategy, business strategy. So I'm, I'm I'm not sure if it's sweeping it under the carpet, but I think it's a case of that you have well, as individuals, you know, that we have to build credibility, and they need to trust. Mm -hmm. a, a board's job is to have um, noses in, fingers out, right? They're there to govern and ask tough questions, um, and, and and the job of a CIO and a CISO who should be on the same level, not one reporting to the other, but we can have that debate another time, is. Um, mm -hmm. It is to provide a balanced view of how um, what the what, what we're trying to do from a technology perspective and how we're going to make sure that we don't lose life, body, and soul when we go and do it, right? And how to deliver security um, into the proposition. So, for for uh, just back to why I, I, we we am trying to use a lot of of cloud services, and when I say cloud services, yes, we do use you know. A couple of those providers you mentioned, um, but uh, we also use an awful lot of um, software as a service, right? So the thing, the true value is when you buy functionality and capability, not necessarily tin in somebody else's data center. Um, and I, th I think that when you speak to um, a business person, a board of directors about buying capability and functionality because it provides you with agility, lower cost and the ability to detect, respond, and recover faster, then it's it's not based upon technology, it's based on the business outcome. So, so I think it's a lot about how you use your language and what how you're explaining the proposition to the board, to the execs, mm -hmm. um, to make sure that they get it because they, they don't care about whether it is um, a, a pink widget sitting under my desk, or about something in a in a fluffy data center which I've never seen before. They want to know what is it secure? Is it going to make me money? Uh, can you do it better, faster? And can you make sure? You, uh, can you give me a level of a surety that you're actually going to do it? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that, that's back to my old mantra: <laughs> people, process, governance, metrics to to go and prove it all. Right? Yeah. What one thing that you said, you know, kind of triggered uh, a response in my in my brain, and that's that's you know, they would be asking, is it secure? You know, um, but that's real. You know, what is secure for me could be completely different secure for someone else. So, I've you know, is it is it the case that you know maybe the board should and the executive management should say, uh, what is the acceptable level of loss, for example, in in the company? 
and that is then yeah. driving the security investment. So, 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 so it's, an, it's an interesting question, right? So, so <laughs> risk appetite statements and all that, that, that kind of good mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so, right, okay, we've been in this industry quite a long time. Um, we, we both know there's no th such thing as perfect security no. uh, because perfect security means that the system doesn't work pretty much, right? It provides yeah, not usable. Yeah. Right, no functionality whatsoever. So it's what's an acceptable level of risk to enable the business mission. Um, the, the problem with risk appetite statements um, the, uh, or uh, the way people express risk a lot of the time is around how many times are you, are you going to crash the car? Um, and yeah, I don't want to crash my car ever. I want to define how far from the car in front I'm going to be and define um, a, a, a risk tolerance which is low is reasonably practical. And that's an airline term, ELARP. Yeah? So I think people need to think about how they uh, measure risk. And that's a completely different conversation and probably take us a couple of hours to have. But I think we need to, as an industry, get away from um, how we measure risk appetite um, to something which is a bit more rational and a bit more data driven and more about how you avoid a crash rather than how many times you crash. Right. Yeah, yeah, cool. Do you have any any perhaps closing remarks before we uh, hand over to Francesco? Yeah. So, so the, the, my, my thesis is, is about how we deliver um, really excellent world-class security at a lower cost using intelligence as co the core part mm -hmm. of the mission. Um, I'm kind of calling it lean security, but I don't think it's the right term. But so I'll maybe take a pop quiz later on with you. But it's about how do we deliver the same the this the, the same level of quality with less staffing, but a far greater degree of automation and reliance on technology to enable the people. Now that doesn't mean that I'm doing everything automated or I even think it should be, but machine and man together, machine and person together, delivers a better security outcome than either one separately. Um, and that, that's really the thesis. And, and as I said, there's a lot of things around economics, baking security in, flexibility, the ability to burst, which are really um, why I'm doing this. Um, and also it's, it, it brings things quicker to the market for my business. Perfect. Thank you, Bob. No problems. Thanks, Valerie Mayor. Appreciate it. Francesco, over to you. And I'd like to say thank you very much for, for joining in and, and for having this this insight. And I, I like the sideline. I like the data-driven approach. I like uh, the, the risk-based approach uh, that you show, Robert, or oh, Bob, sorry. <laughs> um, I like that approach because it's, it's different. And with security, we tend to be sometimes just reactive. We tend to be, you know, security because security because it's dangerous and it, shifting the mindset to a data-driven decision data driven risk management and data driven uh, you know conscious decision it's it's definitely the key and it's definitely the right message to say but let me uh, talk a little bit more about the chapter and what we have in planning all right so we are looking for people we are looking to do more and more of this event we're looking to uh, to have more people joining us uh, so we currently recruiting for uh, public outreach and effectively uh, a director of digital marketing a director for social media uh, events and then an assistant for uh, events marketing and research uh, we're looking for people that want to contribute on our blog on our research uh, we are uh, effectively um open to a uh, research topic and the question you should ask me fundamentally is uh, and and i think i discussed over and over uh, we discussed with vlad when he rejoined the, the chapter and we discussed with few other uh, members is why to join and well fundamentally is to shape the future of the cloud security and shape uh, as a collective industry inside shape how we define security and having different perspectives so be part of the journey and then at least but not last uh, i'd say the prestige of joining the cloud security alliance that are the one that are shaping effectively all the standards uh, that are creating the exam and 
effectively join in in a community of like-minded expert people where you can bounce and ping your ideas if you're a practitioner, if you're not a practitioner. Um, so really be part of something that is greater than you where you can learn, share and get the benefit out of it. We also do mentoring, we do, as I said, research events, and we do networking inside. And also we have a new platform that is coming out that we will announce a little bit more globally, uh, that is called Circle, where there is some even monetization uh, opportunity. Um, in September, we have our annual event that is called the AGM, Annual Gateway Meeting, where we discuss uh, um, effectively anything cloud security. So we're going to have Google, AWS, and uh, of course, Azure, so Microsoft, all the three cloud provider presenting different topics, uh, how to do compliance in, in the cloud, how to do security in the cloud, of course, and a various mix and range of presentation varied from how do you start in the cloud? How do you get the job in the cloud? up to the level of how do you do serverless security and uh, how do you uh, secure effective microservice. So uh, mix, mix, of, uh, mix of topics uh, that could interest you in any kind of things. And it's virtual. So you can join, you can join our YouTube channel, you can join our stream, you can comment and interact as we've done today. Uh, on the sideline, I, I myself have a, a, a podcast called Cybersecurity and Cloud Podcast. Again, a lot of cloud people. We also have discussion and, and stream on uh, cloud security, of course, <laughs> application security. And we focus really on uh, the human aspect of uh, all these these people, the stories that brought uh, people in together and how did they learn, how did they start, so that also you can become effectively part of this journey. In uh, soon to be in July, we have the award of the Cybersecurity Influencer of the Year. So I think the uh, um, candidates are still open, so you can submit your name for it. Uh, and we will be judging at the end of this month. And uh, next month, we will be announcing the winner. Unless we have a question on the channel, let me check. We have just one question from uh, Simon. I think it was Paul. I think it might have been Paul Simmons uh, or some Simon. Oh, yeah, Paul, yeah. Uh, it was a comment about the, um, when Bob, uh, you discussed, you know, how security uh, effectively products may lose uh, the value and then, you know, could be replaced with, you know, with uh, yeah. kind of in the cloud. I think Paul's comment is that, uh, what he's seen and what I've seen certainly as well, you know, when a cybersecurity startup is, is purchased by, you know, bigger player, uh, it sometimes loses the um, drive, you know, on customer quality and the product uh, in in lieu of uh, financial results, uh, which is obviously not not great. Even though in, in, in that perspective, I've started discussion with, uh, started discussion with a few of the VC founder and they start putting more and more attention on, on security in general, not just cloud security. And they start putting that as one of the element, uh, depending on the round they're having. Bob, do you see that happening in your space? Do you finance any? Yeah, I, I do. I, and a good comment from Paul is a strange fact. Paul and I worked in the Jericho forum about 10 years ago on... Um, on, on it's a small industry, I guess. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so hi, Paul. Um, totally agree with the, with the point. But yes, I think that um, it, 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 secure, I, get, I get pulled into a number of VC discussions from, 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 from colleagues and friends um, when they're looking to in, invest in whatever company. And security becomes a very big part of the conversation, right? So um, data breaches, data losses, and product security, particularly in the IoT space, is now becoming a big thing, right? It's becoming a place to either uh, win or lose and how your product either fails or is the next big thing. So I do think that there's an increasing focus on it, but I don't think there's still enough focus on it. And if it's the VCs who are pushing the agenda rather than the companies themselves, you kind of lost the battle to a certain extent. It's you need to, you know, as I think as we've all said, you know, security needs to be baked in from inception. It needs to be one of the design principles. It's not something which you just latch on at the end. 
I think it will get better, Francesco, um, particularly with that kind of, you know, people will start seeing that you're not getting bought, you're not getting the, the investment because you're not doing security well. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the same time, but, if there is no need, if there is no drive uh, from external industry like regulation, it doesn't become as important. So that bumps up the importance of security in a specific element and specifically yeah. for startup where your risk, your major risk that you evaluate is go to market and not be able to get the funding or not be able to effectively execute on your idea. Uh, bringing the risk of actually not being able to execute as part of the security topics bump up the security at least from a minimal layer because otherwise you, you see scale up that all of a sudden say well we need security let's hire a CISO now all of a sudden let's put in program a security and I've seen them over and over so I've seen plenty of scale ups that all of a sudden say well we hire a CISO and then security is sorted <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that CISO has got two years' experience and no budget, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's that's a standard with scale up hiring a CISO, and then you don't have a team, and you kind of do what you can with the resource that you have. And as as you said, Bob, is is converting effectively your organization and trying to find the people that you can uh, put a little bit of a security, a small security hat on, so that you can you can create a team. I, th I think that's the thing, right? So security isn't a sole person sport. You know, it's not a solo sport. It's a team sport. And everybody has to participate and be part of that team. Um, so good security is when IT, the business, all are part of that team. So my, my dream is that the, you know, the, the 1,600 employees of, of my current organization are all part of that team and know their piece. And that's about cultural change, training, awareness, and, a, and, a, and visibility around process behind how things happen. Um, yeah. So if we have a, we develop um, a, a, a culture across every organization of being people centric in terms of security, we'll be in a much better place. And I think that as time goes on and people are more uh, digital natives and more cyber savvy, that that's going to be a natural evolution as well. And as you say, cyber savvy, I think, is is really the key thing where nobody needs to be the super cyber security expert, but everybody could be the, the, the stage and the gate to actually uh, sign yeah. a check. Like uh, the finance guy can say, have this guy passed, has this company passed any security element? Let me contact the security office. Uh, or the uh, normal employee at the reception can ask, uh, can you show me the documents? Uh, whenever you show up. So small little steps, small security step, uh, even reviewing an email and, and, and double questioning, is this actually one of our email addresses? Is this one of our domain? Um, are those things that uh, extend an outreach and not everybody needs to be a cybersecurity expert also because we have a massive lack of cybersecurity experts. So we need SME, we need people like Bob that has that vision and drive the organization, but then have the outreach to effectively have security as part of everybody's job. And if you hear any of my presentation, I, I, I kind of hint every five minutes about that topic. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, any final remark from you, Bob or Vladimir, before we close? No, I, do, I think it's more of a thing about um, by the CSA, right? So I, th I, I would urge people to join to participate and drive forward the state of the art right we need um, I, as i said about security it's it's not a sole sport it's a team sport right and we need to all participate in delivering that security if you think there's something wrong don't gripe about it let's work and design how to go and fix it so contact francesco contact the guys at the csa and let's work out how we can deliver the future together I love that you just, just stole my message. So <laughs> I'll, I'll agree. It's like Bob said everything for me. So Vlad, any any closing remark? Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, you know, uh, great event. Uh, I think good discussion uh, about the, you know, getting into the cybersecurity and obviously cloud security and all that is. Uh, I sometimes see that people are maybe a little bit afraid that you know it's a it's a complex area. I've never done it before, um, but you know. Everybody learns. Uh, I think that that's quite key. Uh, so, if you are curious about certain things, uh, curiosity is the best uh, driver to learn something new. And cybersecurity, I can guarantee, you know, even after being in the industry twenty years, I'm still being curious and finding new things. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid. Join us.
Fantastic. And just for the next event, we're going to have Daniele from CSA Global talking about the new upcoming certification that we are uh, effectively all hands on deck to actually standardize the compliance uh, and a compliance certificate for people so that you can be a, a, a certified cloud auditor, certified by the Cloud Security Alliance so that you know all the standard and you know the CCM and how they map together and how to evaluate from a compliance perspective the cloud environment. We're going to discuss, of course, as a broader on uh, the regulation between Europe, Asia, and the US and next week, Wednesday next week. And then we're going to have a series on um, uh, the, the usual uh, how to get a job in cyber, followed by a few other events uh, with uh, Jim Rivest from CSA Global, the director of CSA Global, as well as uh, a series on CCSK. So please grab your seat so that you can learn about the CCSK for free. And this is what we do here. Thank you very much, everybody. And again, I'd like to thank Bob for his time, Vladimir, and absolutely great insight. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Hey.